Hey guys, and welcome to my top 10 combat money making methods for 2018. This video will not include any bossing and purely slayer monsters or monsters that you can farm 24 7 for GP. So let's get cracking on, shall we? Grab a cup of tea, sit back, relax, and enjoy. So at number 10, we have corrupted creatures and none in specific, but in this video, you're seeing corrupted scorpions which are around 2 to 4 mil per hour, as I've tested in a loot video before. It really depends on what your gear is, but if you have decent gear and decent stats, you can easily get 2 mil an hour consistently. Now, the corrupted creatures do require 88 plus Slayer. The scorpions require 88, being the first or entry-level monster in the corrupted creatures dungeon, or the Menophos or Sophanam dungeon, whatever you want to call it. Now, the nice thing is, is that the Sophanam dungeon gives you the option for drops to go inside a chest. So, apart from these special drops, like the Kopesh or the Key of the Crossing, I believe, you can just AFK and you don't have to pick up anything, which is kind of crispy and very nice, in my opinion. And they are also around 350k combat experience per hour, which is decent, I guess. Coming in at number 9, we have the Chaos Dwarf Battlefield being around 2 mil per hour. And I do say that with caution because it can be lower, but it can also be higher depending on your luck. Now, the Chaos Dwarf Battlefield requires the forgiveness of the Chaos Dwarf quest complete, which is an annoying quest, and the quest before that is also pretty annoying and takes quite some time. But once you do have it done, you can AFK yourself some money. Now the main money you're going to be making is from the hand cannons which are around 600 to 650k at the moment which is pretty good as they're always disassembled for invention and you can get even more money if you get the dragon pickaxe which is around 6 mil GP. The only downside to this method is that sometimes it can't really be AFK'd for some reason the dwarves stop attacking you. You can use a scrim sort of aggression or if you're an even higher level player you can use aggression potions to counter that. Uh, but I only recommend using aggression potions here if you have good armor or if you have soul split, which then you can just survive easily. Now this can happen and it can be quite annoying, but you won't be able to get a dragon pickaxe stop for a few hours or even 10 hours if you're very, very unlucky. But normally I'd say you get a dragon pickaxe drop every three or four hours, but that's just from my testing. And I've AFK'd here for around 25 hours, I believe, on an alt. And yeah, I believe I got like seven dragon pickaxes, which isn't too bad in terms of money. At number 8, we have Ganodermic Beasts, requiring 95 Slayer and I'd say 80 plus combat stats and gear to kill efficiently. These are pretty annoying in my opinion, especially if you use AoE abilities by accident, but you can also semi-AFK them one by one if you wish to, but that's pretty slow experience and money per hour. So I suggest you do not AFK here and kill them manually and focus on DPSing them down, as they do have quite a large health pool. Now, the main money you're going to be making from Ganodermic Beasts is from the sticks, Ganodermic Flakes, which are required to make the Ganodermic armor and repair it and stuff like that. And because of invention, it's much more expensive than it used to be because it dropped down to a very low price a long time ago, before invention, of course. And you make a lot of money from the dropped seeds, like the palm seeds, which are worth quite some money. But being entirely honest, if you have 95 Slayer, you probably have access to better monsters that give you more money per hour like Abyssal Demons, which, spoiler alert, will be on this list. At number 7, we have Dark Beasts, being 1 to 2 mil GP per hour, but being consistent GP per hour. Now, the GP per hour can be much higher here if you're killing them with a cannon and stuff like that, but we are going to be focusing on killing them casually by AFKing them one by one, and you don't even require aggression potions to do this, as they are aggressive themselves. Now, as for most of the creatures on this list, I do have a full guide, and I'll leave that in the description below if you're interested. But, for the basics, you just want to have tier 70 gear and armor, and then you just want soul split, you can do it without, of course, with the Vampirism Aura or the Blood Fury, but with Soul Split, it's going to be much easier. And it does require 90 Slayer to kill them, which is a shame. Now, this money-making method shines if you're using a legendary pet to pick up the seeds and the noted drops, which are pretty much the main source of money. And, of course, the Spring Cleaner for crushing the rune items that they do drop will make you money. And they drop a lot of coins. Actually, in fact, I believe they're one of the best monsters in the game for coin drops. So items like a advanced gold accumulator will definitely help you out here to pick up the coin drops for you because we all know we are lazy in this game and we want to AFK and we don't want to be picking up drops 24-7, do we? At number 6, we have Rorarius or Rorari, requiring 81 Slayer and being located in the Ascension Dungeon. Now I do have a loot from 1000 of these and a older guide. 
if you were interested in killing them efficiently. But yeah, all you need is a good ranged weapon and some armor to armor or even anima core armor or, or pernix. You know, it doesn't really matter what you take here as long as it's level 70 plus and you can attack them and they get aggressive to you and start attacking you each time. But that eventually ends. If you want to AFK them even harder, you want to have soul split and an aggression potion. And the way you make money is not per se from the nose drops because they make you like 300k in an hour. It's from the keystones, which are like 150 to 350k each, which are pretty cheap these days, but you can still make one to three mil per hour here, which is kind of nice. They are also okay range experience per hour, being around 200 to 300k XP per hour. Now, if you want to kill these, it is nice to AFK them, but they are definitely not one of the best methods in the game. So if you want to get the most amount of money in the game, this is probably not the method for you. Just wait till we get to the top five methods. At number 5 we have a creature that doesn't require such a high slayer level as the other ones on this list, being gargoyles requiring 75 slayer. That they are around 2 to 3 mil per hour depending on what gear you're using and what level you are in terms of stats. If you have better gear you're obviously going to be killing them as fast as I am or even faster and it really makes them easy and you can easily get money here. As they have noted drops and a huge amount of rune items, so if you're using a spring cleaner, that's where the most of your profit is going to be coming from, and it in turn will also make them easier. Now you do require a rock hammer to kill these, and I suggest putting it in your tool belt, or alternatively you can put a legendary pet with the perk, uh, the finishing off perk I believe it's called, and he will just finish them off for you like you see in the video, and it requires zero effort to kill them, because if you do not, you have to keep right clicking them at 1 HP and smashing them to kill them. I highly suggest that you kill these in the Slayer Tower in Canafis because then you can get a contract for a certain amount of kills and you can get GP or common experience as a reward as well, which then adds up in profit. And you also get 20% of the original Slayer experience you would be getting from killing the creature on task, which is also very nice, especially if you're trying to level up. At number 4 we have a creature that does not require any slayer level whatsoever but does in turn require you to have 85 dungeoneering to access the dungeon to kill these. Now frost dragons have been around for a very long time but they are still very consistent GP per hour. Even if you're just using guffins and a Zyron Wrecking War Spear or even a God Sword here at level 70 stats you can still make 2 to 2.5 mil per hour. Now if you're a high level player and you're using magic no pepper to note the bones and you're using ranged and even the Bone Picker, which is the upgraded Bone Crusher, which can pick up bones for you and just place them in your inventory at a higher level and you're killing them with ranged or magic, you can get upwards of 6 mil per hour. But that's only if you're a very high level player. If you're a mid-level player, expect to get 2.5 to 3 mil per hour here. If you want a full guide, I obviously have one on my channel, and you can use that if you want to know more about Frost Dragons. A Legendary Pet is also useful, as it can pick up bones for you, but it has a cooldown, so if you're killing them fast, it will probably struggle picking up all the bones and you still have to pick them up manually here and there. And apart from that, Frost Dragons are also good combat experience per hour, being around 250 to 350k per hour, and at a lower level, that's pretty damn good. At number 3, we have Turos, which might be an unexpected creature to be on this list, and especially at number 3. Even though I'm not really ranking them, and it's just a general top 10, and they aren't in a particular order. But yet, Turos can be up to 3 mil per hour. Maybe a bit lower if you're killing them with ranged. But if you're killing them with magic, like you can see in my full guide, which I highly suggest you look up, you can get 3 mil per hour. Now, the way you get this much money is pretty much only from the Spring Cleaner. As a spring cleaner pretty much crushes all the rune daggers if you have a high level spring cleaner and those make a lot of profit. The other drops are pretty bad and you can alk them I guess or pick them up. Some are noted like the Olympiate roots and some coin drops but the main money you're going to be making is from the spring cleaners. But the main reason you want to be doing Turos is for the farming experience. Now you can get upwards of 250k farming experience per hour at Turos using the cedar side. Now again, I highly suggest you watch my full guide on these because there's no point in me explaining this in this video as the video is going to be way too long otherwise. On number 2 we have the spiritual mages and rangers of the Zamorak encampment. Now alternatively you can also do this at the Saradomen encampment with the Noxious Scythe and get mad melee experience power, but this one is focusing on the Zamorak one, which you want to be doing with a magic weapon. I again do have a full guide which I'll link in the description below, but this method only has a few requirements. Well, Soul Split is a high level requirement. 83 Slayer is a mid level requirement but might be annoying for some people. And you do require some decent gear. 
Now, once you do have all of those things, you can easily AFK here using your spring cleaner and make profit. Now, apart from that, you also get a lot of noted drops and runes. And you also get the occasional rune halberd, which is worth, I believe, 70k or something. Anyways, it doesn't matter. You can alk those and you can also alk the other rune items your spring cleaner does not crush. Now this method is a whopping 500k magic experience per hour plus method, so that means it is equal to the abyss, if not better. And if you're using a noxious staff here, you can get way better experience than the abyss, using aggression potions of course, unless they're aggressive to you if you're not wearing any samurai items. And that's personally why I would put this method at number 2, as it's great magic experience per hour and who does not want magic experience and money at the same time, and it's AFKable. Absolutely solid method, guys. At number one, we have Abyssal Demons. In my opinion, the best way to make money, get charms, and get good common experience at the same time. Now, Abyssal Demons do require 85 Slayer and some decent gear, and maybe even a Vampirism or Penance Aura if you do not have Soul Split. And I highly recommend you do have the Blood Fury if you're a mid-level player. But once you do have these things, and you have yourself some Aggression Potions and some Prayer Potions, you can easily go and AFK these. Now there is a big downside to Abyssal Demons, and the downside is that this area is insanely packed. I mean, there's so many people doing this method, and it can be quite hard to find a world at the Slayer Tower. Alternatively, if you're just doing them as a task, you can kill them in Corridor's Dungeon, and that's pretty much not packed, because once you've done your task, you cannot kill them anymore, so people can't camp there 24-7, if you know what I mean. Anyways, if you're interested in killing Abyssal Demons, I do have a magic and melee guide on my channel, which I'll link in the description. Now that pretty much concludes the video. I didn't include very high quest requirement mobs like the Muspers, because I didn't feel like putting them in the top 10 list. Anyways, if you did enjoy, leave a like down below, and maybe even consider subscribing. And if you did watch the video all the way to the end, please comment crispy down in the comments below. I don't know why I said crispy, it just seemed funny to me. Anyways, catch you guys later. Peace. When you're feeling down on your luck, you're tired and stuck, enough is enough. You gotta pick yourself up, cause life gets hard. It might leave scars, could tear you apart if you let it be smart, yeah. You wanna be just like the stars.